Hey everyone, this is me, the Undead Viking. This intro is not going to be on a video that was going to be on the Gray Fox Games official YouTube, uh, which I maintain as well. You're watching this intro. This is going to be the video that is on uh, Undead Viking videos, which has been my YouTube channel for as long as I've had a YouTube channel. Um, as you all know, uh, well, maybe some of you know, uh, I used to do the YouTube channel as like a side thing that I did. And then I started working in the industry almost 10 years ago. And I worked for Gray Fox Games and I had my hands dirty in all of the projects that over the last five years uh, that I've worked here. Um, it's an awesome job. I really love it. But uh, this is kind of like a commercial for my, well, I mean, my YouTube channel has never been a, a career for me. I never really actively tried to um, make it into a career. My my career is in board game publishing. And so it's, I feel it's weird for me to be talking up a game uh, uh, that, you know, I'm saying, hey, you should go check this game out because it's really awesome. Um, when obviously I am personally going to benefit from the fact that if you watch this and you decide this is a game you're going to be interested in, uh, so I just kind of do this in a bit of transparency. Uh, I feel weird uh, advertising something that I uh, helped create uh, and, and pointing you towards. So um, I am going to gush about this game um, because I really, really love it. Uh, I, I really, uh, in, I've enjoyed playing Tsukiyumi. And when you watch, when we cut and kind of you'll see the little uh, jump there, um, you'll understand uh, why uh hopefully uh, i'll give you that and i'm going to give you well you know what i don't want to give away what that video is going to be and it's going to be seamless it's just going to click over uh and you'll see that but uh yeah so this was kind of just the special intro for uh the version of this video that's going to be on my personal channel but um anyway here we go Hey everyone, this is me, Lance Meister from Gray Fox Games. I'm here to talk to you really briefly about Tsukiyumi. Um, and Tsukiyumi, uh, the game that was, this is my giant box and I have all my other um, expansions as well. Um, this game was published by Gray Fox Games and King Raccoon uh, Games. Um, and this was actually a game that was handled um, as far as like the, the crowdfunding was done before I was actually employed um, with Gray Fox, but I had my hands dirty um, with all of the fulfillment processes and um, a lot of the development of everything of this newest campaign that is going on right now on Kickstarter. It's in the last few days. Um, and this is just me to talk about why I dig this. So when I said that, this is one of those rare tens for me. Um, I don't, I want to talk very briefly about what I consider a 10. Uh, a 10 is a game that maybe I don't play as often as I wish, um, but it is a game that whenever I think about it, it inspires me in some way. It, it, it makes me think about past plays that I've had of it, think about how I could have played better, how I would do things differently. And then I get that itch. I get that feeling that I really need to find the time to play that game again. Um, as my life has continued into the board game publishing world, I have found that I don't really have time to play games for fun as much as I used to. And that's just one of those things. It's uh, most of the games I play now are for playtesting purposes or game development purposes. Um, and uh, I tend to focus on games that I, if I'm going to play a game for fun, I, I usually don't have time to learn it. I usually don't have time to play it several times to get into it. And so I tend to play games that I've already played and also that are of a shorter game length. I mean, in all honesty, it has been several months since I've played a game of Tsukiyumi. And that's mostly because of the fact that it is a game that takes a long, a little bit longer to play. Um, if you're playing with people that don't know how to play the game, it can be very difficult for them to grok the rules uh, of the first time that they run through it. Um, and 
as a person that has a family and, and like commitments to things outside of my work time hours, um, I, I, I have to set up special times. I mean, I have to basically say, uh, who can play this big, long game with me on this specific date? Because the people that I play with also have families and, and outside uh, restraints upon their time when they can do it. But regardless to that, it is a game that I feel like I need to play at least a couple times a year um, because of its effectiveness, because of how amazing it is. Um, when I first played the game, the very first time I ever did, I was very lucky that somebody had was able. I, I mean, I only had a copy, obviously, because I got one. You know, luckily for me, I got it through Gearbox. Uh, but uh, I, I had somebody that actually had played the game several times. Um, in my local gaming area and was willing to teach it to me, which was uh, uh, heaven sent. However, um, in the meantime, earlier this year, um, a, a a board game channel, I think it's called Easy Board Games, and there'll be a link uh, down below uh, that will uh, take it to, it has a fabulous uh, how to play instructional video that um, I would invite anybody if you want to get a feeling for how the game is played. And also if you have the game and if it's sitting on your shelf of shame and then you're having trouble getting it to your table, um, take a watch of that. It is a longer video, um, which is, again, an attribution to um, how epic and how cool uh, Tsukimi is and, and just how in-depth the game is and the different facets that it is. Um, and this kind of feeds into why it's one of my few tens. Um, there are lots of games out there, and and one of the things about the industry right now is that it has exploded over the last six, five, seven years, whatever you want to call it, and it it is it is odd to think that back when I was first getting into the designer board game hobby, like there were like these handful of games that everybody said these are the best games that were made, and now. It just seems like there's like a ton of very good games that are being published and being created right now. And this is kind of a renaissance, if you will, of people um, getting into the designer board game hobby and the plethora of very good games that are available for people to play um, are, you know, there's hundreds of them, uh, you know, as far as being published every year. And but for me, like, <laughs> for something to get to a 10 for me, it is it is something that has to transcend that very good status. And I'm not going to go into other games that I've had. Maybe um, on my personal YouTube channel, I'll someday do these are my 10s, um, something I would do. But uh, the reason why Tsukiyumi is in my, is in that rarefied error for me, if that means anything to anyone. I mean, the only person that really technically should mean anything to me is me. But um, regardless, the reason why it reaches that rarefied spot for me uh, is multitude of reasons. One, it does something that um, makes me feel like I'm telling a story. It makes me feel like I'm uh, encompassing that that fight for the moon. You know, the, the the different factions warring over the different things, and the fact that those all those different factions in the last year or so, it's like the big thing for people to say. Is asymmetric. Oh, it's the, the the there's asymmetric factions. There's asymmetric powers. There's asymmetric this, that, and the other thing. And well, Tsukiyumi was doing that way back when the very first version of it was ever published in King Raccoon. And there were other asymmetric games back then. But before it became in vogue, this was a game that was one of the trendsetters. One of the, one of the people that first you know put that you know so to speak the first footprint on the moon, if you will, to really um, push that, to push the fact that, like, you have all these these cool factions. Um, I'm just, you know, I mean, I, 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 you have all these cool factions, whether, you know, it's Borlords or, or the Cyber Samurai or, or, or the Dark Seed or the Nomads, and this is just the base game stuff. Um, all of them interact with the game differently. All of them win the game differently. Uh, and knowledge of each faction um, is going to help you as the player uh, understand how to win, but also how to fight those other things. And that's another one of the things where it is kind of a 
a, a, a deeper dive into it. And knowing how those factions work and knowing what you need to do to prevent another faction to win is something that I like it because, and this is another thing that like a 10, it rewards repeated play. It rewards not just thinking about go here, collect that cube, do this, turn in the points. It, 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 it rewards a higher knowledge. It rewards an investment of your time and your intellect and your knowledge. And it is, you know, and it is a heavier game. I'll, I'll fully admit it is a heavier game. And, you know, that that has a lot of facets of 4X and area control, all the things that I look for in an epic type of game of this of, the, of this genre. And, but it, it doesn't feel like as you're playing it, one, that's the other thing, I never feel bored. I never feel like I, I'm not doing something because of the action card uh, choices that you're making when you're drafting and you have these cards. And because of the fact that those those cards um, are unique as far as how they work for you and then the different colored phases of each round and how those are going to interact with everybody else that's playing. And then you have to consider that and you also have to consider what cards are going to be transferred because of, you know to other players that they can use. You have to always, for lack of a better term, have your head on a swivel and always be thinking about the next turn and the turn after that. And of course, also the game beyond the game. When you're playing with um, you know, two, three, four people, you have to be thinking about what their tactics are, thinking about where their focus is and trying to discern what their actions are going to be, what they're going to go on. And the other thing, and, and not really the final thing, but the last thing I'm going to point out that I just really adored uh, about the game uh, is the Oni. Um, the evil forces uh, that are on the board that are everybody's enemy, but because of certain cards that you can play, you get to activate these Oni and they become this like aggressive technically almost, well, I mean, it's, it's an aggressive chaotic uh, faction, but since everybody has the ability to activate them and use them and, and move them by the board to mess up what other people are doing, they become uh, a, a, almost like a neutral faction, if you will, a neutral obstacle that you have to keep, again, keep your head in a swivel at realizing how, what, how other people may be using. You don't just have to worry uh, about the dark seed bugs coming and like infesting your, your, your areas that you're trying to take over and, 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 and control. You have to worry about how these dark seed bugs are maybe use these and you know and again all of these factions interact with each other in different ways and and ultimately um i guess one last thing that i really like is um i don't mind some chaos in a game i don't mind dice rolling in certain games for combat or what have you i get that but i do adore the fact that this isn't uh, the combat system is a diceless combat system. It is largely deterministic. It is largely a, a a true my brain against your brain type of game uh, where um, better strategy and tactics should uh, carry the day along with, you know, a little bit of luck as well. Now, there are, as I said, I, I'm going to put that link in the in the uh, in the uh, um, in the description here for easy board games. Uh, I'm going to put that in there uh, to check out that uh, that channel. And check, that guy's done a ton of amazing videos. So go ahead and check those out. But I'm going to put the link um, to the Tsukiyumi so you can watch that. You can get an idea of how the game is played. I'm also going to post several links to different um, review videos that I think really captured um, the just how uh, cool and how awesome uh Tsukiyumi is uh and you know for like Sam Healy or uh Jeremy Howard uh Hungry Gamer you'll find those down there as well and, and I invite you to go check those out and 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 see um if you think Tsukiyumi is going to be uh a game that is going to um want to hit your table and you're going to want to play against your buddies uh to uh see who can come out on top um in, in having playing Suki. Now, the, as I said, the campaign is currently going right now, and uh, it is in its final days. Uh, afterwards, there will be a pledge manager. Uh, so you, uh, depending upon when you see this video, 
uh, you'll be able to go ahead and either check it out while the campaign is live or um, the pledge manager, which I believe is going to be on GamePound at this time. So, and that might change. And if it is, you can definitely, uh, there'll be notifications and updates on uh, the Kickstarter campaign, uh, which the links will be down again there, uh, if you look in the description of this video. But regardless, uh, thank you um, for taking the time to watch this. Um, and let me just kind of gush about a game that I've, I've been really, really enjoyed. Uh, a great deal uh, playing personally and also um, having a hand in getting it made so other people uh, can enjoy the heck out of it as well. But until next time, thank you very much. This is Lance Meister from Gray Fox Games. You have yourself a great day.